Human trafficking is happening here in the state of South Dakota. It's happening in our small communities. Less than 1% of trafficking victims are ever identified, which means as a community, it's our obligation to know the signs and know how to respond and how to report. This is our second annual conference, and the first conference really focused on awareness. So this particular conference, we were hoping not only to expand upon the awareness, but also give people the tools that they need. We're going to educate our mandatory reporters. We're going to provide training for our school teachers, our law enforcement officers, our doctors, and other community members on how do you respond when you see a child or someone else who's experiencing trauma. A lot of the behaviors and a lot of the high-risk activities that pimps use um, to gain access to kids and to young girls and women, um, they come about because of childhood victimization. So drinking, drugging, cutting, anorexia, bulimia, suicide attempts, um, all of those make kids more vulnerable. And so if we can prevent um, kids from going through that series, they're less likely to be trafficked. All the time you hear, oh, they've hit that age and now they're so rebellious. And I say to that, is don't assume it's rebellion because oftentimes behind that something is going on. Kids don't choose to be prostitutes. It's not like they wake up someday and say, I really want to be a prostitute. It is something that happens because it's a way to make money and impoverished areas um, and, and impoverished people are particularly vulnerable. Usually here, by the time a, a child at least gets into sex trafficking in South Dakota, there's been prior sex abuse, maybe drug abuse, things like that. And we need to try to stem this before try, and, and work on the prevention piece. I think if we can create a world World where we're intentional about valuing people, calling them by name, giving them our undivided attention, and taking care of ourselves by valuing and respecting ourselves as well. We can help foster a community where human trafficking is less likely to survive. Looking a person in the eye and saying that they're, they're valuable and uh, you, you're worth looking at, you're worth talking to, um, can create the kind of environment that if somebody is being victimized, they, they're more likely to come forward. Make sure that they realize that there are lots of people looking out for them and that if mom can't handle this topic, maybe a counselor at school can. And again, it just alleviates some of that concern of, I don't, I don't, I don't think mom's ready for this, but I've got other people I can talk to.